Mass is boring. Indeed, the Mass is very boring. We have to admit that if we ever want to truly move to an appreciation of the Mass. The Mass is boring. We hold it up against all of the other opportunities that we have for entertainment in our world. The Mass, on the level of human entertainment, fails tremendously. A poison, though, has crept in to our world through starting with essentially the Protestant Reformation and those who came afterwards saying that any religious experience has to be accompanied by feelings, otherwise known as the warm tinglys. The thought is, expounded by some theologians, that if I do not have the warm tinglys, if I do not have an experience where I feel warmed, or entertain, then I'm not having a truly religious experience. And that is often, you'll see that as you look at the various forms that worship has taken in our country and in our world today, when you turn on the television, some forms of Christian worship today have pyrotechnics and fireworks, Starbucks and the narthex. Pastors wearing jeans to try and cater and be, be more entertaining with jokes and so forth. The music often resembles more of a rock concert than sacred music and sacred worship. Some have got the idea that worship is supposed to be entertaining. And other and also based off of that, the idea is, has arisen that it worship is not entertaining, then it isn't worship. That mindset is also penetrated even into our own Catholic Church. You'll hear sometimes people say, I don't go to church, or I don't go to church that often, because I don't get a lot out of it. Essentially what that person is saying is, I'm not entertained. You'll also hear people say, oh, I don't really make my children go because they don't get a lot out of it. As G.K. Chesterton once noted, though, talking about the fact that a four-year-old once said that he didn't like to go to Mass because he wasn't getting a lot out of it, G.K. Chesterton said that should probably be an indication that we should be going if a four-year-old isn't really that into it. But about this whole mindset that religious worship ought to be accompanied by entertaining feelings in order to make it valid, St. John of the Cross, at the end of the Protestant Reformation, rides into our world like a knight in shining armor. St. John of the Cross is acknowledged by Catholics and non-Catholics and even non-Christians as one of the greatest writers on spirituality to ever live on our earth. And what St. John of the Cross said is a message that our entire country and indeed our world needs to hear. And it's almost as if he was writing to our country 400 years ago. St. John of the Cross said this. I'm paraphrasing here. He did not use the word warm tinglys. But he said that the warm tinglys, the warm fuzzies, the good feelings can never be used to decide whether or not something is a religious experience, whether or not it is true. And indeed, his example, as he, he wrote tons and tons of stuff on this, and he said his, uh, his main point was this, Satan can just as easily manipulate our emotions and our feelings and make us feel like we've had an experience. So how can we then use that as our criteria for whether or not what we're doing is right? And whether or not the Mass is truly good for us to participate in? 
a movie that I, some, for some reason, happen to see, and it seems like I catch the end of it three or four times a year, is Armageddon. A movie about an asteroid bearing down on Earth. And Bruce Willis and a crew head up to the asteroid, and he ends up sacrificing his life for the world. The odd thing about this is, I have no problem admitting this, every time I see the end of that movie, I tear up. I get choked up. Even though I know there's no asteroid bearing down on the planet Earth, and I know Bruce Willis knows nothing about how to fly a spaceship or save the Earth. Nonetheless, I am emotionally involved or invested. My emotions have been tricked. So how then, and I'm sure we've all been in that some kind of a similar situation, how can we then use our emotions, how can we use those things to decide whether or not something is true? And St. John of the Cross is calling us to think about that. Pope Benedict, in writing about the Mass, several years ago, said the power of the Mass is actually this. When I go, I realize I'm at something that I didn't think of, that human beings didn't think of. Whereas all of the other things that we encounter in our world today, we get the sense that we have, that is something that we have made as human beings. The Mass, we know, is not something that we would think of on our own. If we all got together, none of us would really say, hey, you know what would be a great idea? Let's have one of us stand up here and read and then stand and, and, and do what we do with the Mass. It's not entertaining. It's not something that draws us in on a purely emotional level. And yet that is the beauty of it. And that might give us a clue as to how true what we're doing really is. The power of the Mass in experiencing something that is not man-made. That is not man-made. As soon as we try to make the mass entertaining or something that generates special feelings in order to feel like we're doing something that is really true, we have hijacked the mass and taken it and made it into something that is our own but something that it was never meant to be. And the Mass, as soon as we try and make it entertaining, will fail miserably. Because we're competing in the entertainment business against things that are much more successful, have much bigger budgets, and know much more how to be entertaining. The Mass is actually very simple. We come together as a community. And we offer up simple gifts of bread and wine through the hands of the priests, but they are on behalf of all of us. God turns those gifts into his Son, and we ask him to look upon his Son and have mercy on us, to see his Son on the altar, and to remember that sacrifice so that he may not look upon our own sins. After that, we are privileged to come forward and to take into ourselves the God of the universe through the Eucharist. This is not a process that we thought up on our own. And it is not something that we need to apologize for and try and make more entertaining so as to reach the masses through the mass. It speaks for itself. And we never should be concerned about the fact that we don't always have the warm tinglies. We should not always be concerned about the fact that we are not always entertained. We should take comfort in the fact that this is something that God has handed on to us and has asked us to do. And we should take joy in the fact of the beauty that he has, not, he has won for us through his ascension into heaven and through his passing through into that tabernacle of heaven.